everybody, welcome back to Tomcat Air Guns. Today I want to go over tactical barriers. I'm going to go over some of the designs that I incorporated into mine, where I got the idea from, uh, some of the lessons that I've already learned in having these, some really good lessons, um, and then I want to go over how to build them up on the cheap. So these are tactical barriers. They're basically pieces of plywood with some framework in the back, and they stand up on their own. I got this idea from Michael Went of Airgun Nation, and if, you, if you're on YouTube and you look around, you can find um, TAC drills with Tomcat, and that's when I went down to Texas. Michael and I shot um, head-to-head, -head and we did some drills together, and it was really eye-opening for me to go through that process and realize that, hey, I have a whole area of my shooting that is suffering. I'm not training on it at all, and it got me way out of my comfort zone. Um, so I wanted to do something about it. So I came back from Texas inspired to build my own, and I have already seen pretty big benefits in having these. So why build a tactical barrier in the first place? Well, for those of you that don't, that don't know, this is an M4, AR-15, whatever you want to call it. It's a rifle, it's a real deal, and it's a firearm. And I want to train with it. It's a lot of fun to shoot. Um, but shooting one can be difficult. You need to go to a range in the first place. And then you've got other shooters who may or may not be responsible around you. Um, you've got to always shoot in the same direction. And uh, if you can find a range that actually has barriers, is, it, is that range expensive? Do you have to sign up for something special? Uh, you know, like a class or whatever in order to use those barricades? Or is it a free range, but it's always full because it's a free range. Um, and then there's the drive distance. And then let's just talk about shooting this for a little bit. Like I said, this is a firearm. Finding bullets for it can be very difficult. Uh, it's very loud, so you have to wear ear protection. The bullets fly for thousands of yards, and they're lethal for quite a long ways. So to shoot with a barrier and pop, 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 you're hitting your target, and then turn to run, who's behind you? You know, there's so many different things that go into actually using one of these to train with. That's where something like this comes in. This is the DPMS SBR CO2 powered BB rifle. And as you can tell, it's made to mimic the real thing. You take a look at the magazines. They are very close to being the exact same size. Uh, the handle, same angle, although they're not interchangeable. It is a little bit shorter than the real thing, but the real thing comes in all kinds of different lengths. Uh, we've got the Picatinny rail all around, which is another benefit because I can use the equipment that I have that I'm used to on this. I can swap it over to this and still use it and still train with it. A big benefit right there. The uh, mag release button is in the same spot. The charging handle is in the back, same spot, actually works. The charging handle release actually does something. The safety is also in the same spot, but this has... A happy switch. <laughs> this will go from semi-auto to full auto. And for my purposes, I'm not really going to use full auto, but I can tell you guys it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Let's go over some of the pros and cons of using something like this versus using the real thing. First and foremost, you're not going to need your ear protection. And that's pretty cool right there. Uh, secondly, like I said, this is a firearm, and those bullets are lethal for thousands of yards. This is a BB gun. I'm going to go ahead and say it's not lethal because I'm having a hard time getting through the first layer of cardboard on a cardboard box at 20 yards. I mean, this thing is like, <laughs> the bullets are just dropping straight. I mean, they're rolling out of the barrel just about. <laughs> Um, additionally, it's got a good weight to it. It's not quite as heavy as this one is, but it's got a good weight to it, so I can go through all my motions having that weight and not having something that's feather light, and then when I go to use a real thing, there's that difference. Let's say I wanted to try some new equipment out that I was planning on for this rifle. I can try it on this, and I can go through all the motions and uh, all the movements on this without actually shooting this. And it gives me a chance to decipher for myself, is that equipment going to work for me or not? 
As you can see, this is basically just plywood and two by fours. It's really nothing special. Um, and the shapes cut out into it, that's as far as your imagination wants to take you. Uh, this is basically a two by four, that's a two by four, that's a two by four. Uh, this was actually a two by six. And I went out to the yard, got a branch, I cut it so it would fit in here, made a jig on my table saw so I could cut a, sl a slice in it, and then I just slapped it in here. I left the branch on here. It just gives me something to deal with and something to shoot around that uh, is different. Um, the circle's kind of weird. I got this slope right here, which when I built this thing, I kind of did a little test run and my barrel slipped right down when I, when I leaned on it. I was like, oh, that's pretty good. That's a pain in the butt, which is what I want. Since I like that curve so much, I actually did uh, some other curves down here that again, they're just gonna be a pain in the butt for me to deal with. And this one on the bottom, if I was actually to try to shoot through here, I can't see. It's so low to the ground. I think it's like seven inches off the ground. Um, so I have to find another way to shoot around that. And then there's just some shapes cut out to, you know, stuff for me to deal with. One of the variations I made versus Michael Wentz design was I put my supports on the outside. And the reason I did that was to give myself another place to shoot. His is a nice clean wall and it does look very nice. And he can use it like this and he can brace, he can grab like that and brace. Uh, he can do all the things that I can do except I've got another spot here that I can lean on. I did the same thing on my smaller target and other than that, it's almost a carbon copy of what Michael Went did. The reason being, I really liked his design. I found it was really challenging and really took me out of my element. So one of the things I particularly enjoyed about it was this window here is not only this one, but it's also this one down here. And it's kind of weird angled board thing is really, it's really good. These two are great because they're so small and they're so low or weird. This one's a really strange. Uh, it really takes you just totally out of your element. And that's what it's all about. It's taking you out of your element and using your gun in a way that you normally don't and still hitting your target. On top of that is, you know, this up here, it looks like it's good for a standing supported shot or, you know, maybe an offhand, but it's just tall enough by about that much that makes me kind of like, oh, I got to get up on my toes in order to actually hit the target. So again, that one was really good. Let's talk about building these barricades up on the cheap. I'm in a unique situation where I'm in a wood shop, so I have more scraps than I know what to do with already. So these ended up costing me $1. You might not be in that same situation, so how are you gonna get lumber? Go down to your local Home Depot or Lowe's and where they cut the big sheet goods, so you bring a plywood and you say, oh, I wanna cut you know, in half or whatever. Go to that station where they cut the lumber for customers and see if they have cutoffs. And cutoffs could be something like this, could be a cutoff from a customer. They don't want it, and Home Depot doesn't want it, and they can't sell it. And next thing you know, you've got yourself a window. Now, it may not be plywood. It might be this glued together chipboard stuff. Um, who cares? It's going to be outside. You're going to paint it. You're going to shoot through it, and hopefully not shoot it, but you may shoot it. Who cares? Get what you can get to get yourself a nice barricade built up. When it comes to the 2x4s for the framework, head to the cull lumber section. That's like the broken boards like this one. Um, stuff that's broken or uh, bent or got a massive twist in it or something like that. A lot of times you'll see like 2x6s, 2x8s, 2x12s are very popular in there. And you know what a 2x12 is? It's a couple 2x4s sitting next to one another. So if you've got a table saw, Pick up a board that's too big and just cut it down to what you need. One way to get your two-by material dirt cheap, I'm talking about like free, is to ask the guys in the lumber department at Home Depot Lowe's for these. And what these are is called uh, dunnage or banding boards or stickers. They're, they're different names for them. But ask them for these. These are the boards that go on top of the big pallets of wood. And then the bands go through this little groove here and band the whole thing together. Normally, those big box stores, they can't wait to get rid of these. They're throwing them out. And these were great for behind the plywood. Either hold it together, it works good for here. I mean, if you look at this, 
I've got a bottom board right there. I've got my supports here with another piece. And then I've got my uprights, this one and that one, and all of these boards right there, these. All of this can be made out of this stuff, which is free. In fact, this whole thing could be made out of this stuff, except for maybe these two two by fours, which maybe I found those in the coal lumber. Real quick, before I run a training exercise, I wanted to cover two things. And one is something I learned in running these drills about myself. And I would make my movements, run back and forth, take my shots. And while I was running, I realized very quickly that I was not engaging my safety. And that's a big no-no um, for firearm safety. Uh, so I learned that really quick and I'm already addressing it. It's already something I'm very diligent at fixing and not doing again. Since I was running with my safety off, that meant I could have had an accidental discharge. If I AAD with a BB gun and shoot myself in the foot, it might sting a little bit and that's about it. If I AD with a firearm, it could be a really bad day or a really horrible day. So I'm really glad if nothing else comes of this but learning about my failure with the safety, it's totally worth it, all of this. Another thing is when I come running back here and I spin to take my shot, um, I'm sometimes ramming this gun into my barricade. I'm not nice to it. Um, that's a really big benefit to having something like this to practice with is I can beat the hell out of it and I don't really care. If it breaks, it's about a $180 gun, give or take. Um, even if it breaks, I can still use it if it's non-functional. I can still go through the motions. All right, with all that being said, let's get a run in. Eyes closed, safety on. Missed on that one. Oh, gotcha. So that's what training looks like with the barricades. Uh, I'm planning on having a few more videos going over different ways to use these barricades, uh, but I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching and happy shooting. Mm -hmm.